Hello from Suffolk, England, where it's a sunny spring morning with some clouds set to pass through in the afternoon. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. Psalm 23, verses 1 to 3. It's Tuesday the 7th of April, in the year of our Lord 2020, and it's time for a dose of civilised calm to start your day. This is Mark's Almanac, your regular respite from the madness of World War V, recorded in the peace of the English countryside. She'd been here a month, except for Mrs Henderson, who in theory looked after the cottage, and probably went through her things given half a chance. She hadn't exchanged more than a dozen real words with anyone. She let them think she was an artist. This was the kind of countryside that artists liked. Actually, it was bloody beautiful. Just around this village it was superb. If Turner and Landseer had met Samuel Palmer in a pub and worked it all out and then got stubs to do the horses, it couldn't have been better. That's from Good Omens by Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman, also now an excellent series on Amazon Prime. A dark, funny, wise book that also understands how close to paradise you can be in a country village. On this day in 1739, Dick Turpin was executed in York for horse-stealing. His death only launched his career as a romantic hero, riding into legend on his horse, Black Bess. Also on this day in 1827, John Walker recorded the first sale of his wooden friction matches. He called his invention Congreves and refused to apply for a patent, as he was already well off. Here's a poem by Christina Rossetti for lambing season, remembering a hard year where the shepherds had to work long hours to bring their charges through, the lambs of Grasmere. The upland flocks grew starved and thinned. Their shepherds scarce could feed the lambs whose milkless mothers butted them or who were orphaned of their dams. The lambs a thirst for mother's milk filled all the place with piteous sounds. Their mother's bones made white for miles the pastureless wet pasture grounds. Day after day, night after night, from lamb to lamb, the shepherds went, with teapots for the bleating mouths instead of nature's nourishment. The little, shivering, gaping things soon knew the step that brought them aid, and fondled the protecting hand and rubbed it with a woolly head. Then, as the days waxed on to weeks, it was a pretty sight to see these lambs with frisky heads and tails, skipping and leaping on the lee, bleating in tender, trustful tones, resting on rocky crag or mound, and following the beloved feet that once had sought for them, and found those very shepherds of their flocks, these loving lambs so meek to please, are worthy of recording words and honour in their due degrees, so I might live a hundred years and roam from strand to foreign strand, yet not forget this flooded spring and scarce saved lambs of Westmoreland. That's almost all for today. If you're on Twitter, the account for Sutton Who will have one of their experts answering questions live from 10 this morning. Also, an initiative by a marvellous charity is launching on YouTube today. Formed in 1920, the Not Forgotten Association has been providing entertainment and recreation for those injured in service of their country for a century. And now they've created a free variety show, The Best Seat in the House, with new episodes uploaded twice a week at 3pm on Tuesdays and Fridays featuring all kinds of familiar faces. It's particularly aimed at care homes, which the charity can no longer tour as usual. So please take a look and pass on the word. And if you know anyone who needs a touch of calm, 
please do pass on this podcast as well. If you need some music to wake up to, how about Tori Amos performing A Nightingale Sang in Berkeley Square? That certain night, the night we met, there was magic abroad in the air. Until tomorrow, stay civilised, keep calm, and please keep washing your hands. Have a lovely day.